Happy Resurrection Day! You know, when Pastor Don asked me to speak this morning, I, I jumped at the opportunity. But then I had a real dilemma. I needed to come up with something to talk about. <laughs> First, I knew, of course, I didn't want to just simply present the same old Easter story we've all heard time and time again. Most of us have seen several of these early morning Easter services, and they all seem about the same. It seems you've seen one, you've seen them all. I just wanted to talk about something different. So as I researched topics to discuss, I came across this idea to present a biblical message about Easter for this kind of audience, for you guys. Uh, basically a gathering of fellow believers. I know we're all Christians. We already know the biblical Easter story. But since we do need to touch on it, bear with me as we do this. Uh, once we establish, once we start with the truth, we can truly examine all those further implications. So, let's start with what the Bible says happened that first resurrection weekend. If you'll recall, you can look at the last couple chapters of every gospel. They're going to give you the same information. But just so I can uh, reference this properly, let me put it out there for you. You can research this yourself. Matthew chapters 27 and 28. Mark chapters 15 and 16. Luke chapters 23 and 24, and John chapter 19 through 21. So here's the facts that are laid out. The, uh, if you remember that 1 Corinthians 15, uh, that there's a little creed I've talked about before. Uh, this creed has been dated within months, historically, of the resurrection. So this isn't a new thing. But I'm just going to read you real quick. This is a perfect synopsis for what the entire Resurrection Weekend was about. This is Paul writing to the church in Corinth. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, starting with verse 3, Paul starts with, For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures, and then he appeared to a bunch of people. That's the essential message. So if you look at what the Bible says happened here, the uh, Jesus was dead and buried. The disciples were defeated. Everybody thought this was over. The end was here, right? The Messiah was dead, or who they thought there was the Messiah, the way they understood the Messiah to be. Everything was over. All was lost. But then, on the third day following Jesus' death, after he was buried, his tomb was found empty. And no one really could understand what was going on now. Now they're really confused. But then, <laughs> then what happened was Jesus started appearing to people. This guy they thought was dead started showing up. Now what's interesting is these are all historically accurate events that even atheists will, will agree these occurred historically. The bottom line is, the tomb was empty and Jesus appeared to people to prove that he had risen from the dead. So the real story of Easter, for Christians, is that empty tomb. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and all the implications that that means for humanity. It's substitutionary atonement. Jesus predicted his own resurrection, and then his victory over death proved that he was who he said he was. And therefore, everything he said all along was true throughout his entire ministry. We can buy it now. The bottom line is... What ultimately happened from all this is we finally understood, even though we don't deserve it, we no longer have to worry about our future. The payment due for our sins has already been paid. Jesus' sacrifice is our ticket to eternal life. That's the gospel. So, we get that. Jesus is alive. Now what? So the summary of all this is Jesus is alive. Praise God for his sacrifice. And once we accept that historical truth, you're a Christian. But once you may not, you may have the same questions I do at that point. For instance, what now? What do I do with this information? Ultimately, how can I express my gratitude? That was a really deep one there for me. How, how do I show my appreciation? Well, Jesus told, told us through the Gospel of John that we need to follow his commands. He said, to quote John 14, 15, If you love me, keep
keep my commands. The problem is that can get pretty confusing because Jesus gave his followers a lot of instructions. A lot of information is recorded all through the Gospels. And by implication, everything throughout the entire scripture in the Old Testament is also instructions directly from Jesus. So what are we supposed to do? We can't learn all this stuff overnight and we want to show our love and appreciation. But what I thought was interesting is I decided to hone in on what did Jesus say in those 40 days between the resurrection and his ascension? What were the essentially the last words Jesus left the disciples with? Now, I, again, I understand this is this is even a lot of information. According to to the Gospel of John, chapter 21, Jesus did so many things that, quote, if every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. And that's just t- describing those 40 days. So, what I decided to do was look at what he said specifically, those little red words in, the, in your red line Bible, the words directly from Jesus at the end of every gospel. And I found some really interesting things. There's some very specific instructions at the end of all these gospels. To summarize, in Matthew, the very first gospel we come across, it says Jesus' last, last instructions were the Great Commission. And to quote directly, it says, Go and make disciples of all nations. That's interesting. Okay, go make disciples. Well, then you go to Mark. At the end of Mark, his last words, his last words of instructions to the disciples recorded were, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Okay, cool. Then at the end of Luke, you remember the road to Emmaus, and then he appeared to the, all the disciples in Jerusalem. And he said, uh, he told them then, or it's recorded, that Jesus opened the disciples' minds so that they could understand the scriptures. And then he explained them, he explained to them his words exactly describing what the gospel is. The good news, according to Jesus, recorded in Luke, is there is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. And then finally, in, in the end of the book of John, John records Jesus' last instructions to Peter were to follow me, and then he repeated it a couple verses later, you must follow me. That's pretty interesting. So in summary, I put together a little synopsis, grouped it all together of those final instructions recorded in the Gospels. In Matthew, he gives us the initial command, our great commission, once we become a Christian, is to share that information. Go! Don't wait for people to come to you. Go find people and make disciples of them. Okay, you might ask, how, what does that mean? How exactly am I going to do that? Well, the next gospel message from the book of Mark tells us Jesus' last words were, again, go and preach the gospel. That sounds a lot like preaching the gospel is how you're going to create disciples. And then finally, the last two gospels kind of give us some support. The, uh, the way he explains, if you study his word and seek you're going to find the truth about him and about the gospel. And again, in Luke is where he describes the gospel for himself, that there is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. And then finally, follow Jesus in John. Follow Jesus. So our command is to go and make disciples by preaching the gospel. And we're going to know the gospel and know him and know how to do this better by studying his word, seeking the truth, and remembering that the gospel is there for all forgiveness of sins for all who repent. And when all else fails, just follow Jesus by putting others first, that self-sacrificial love, and it will come full circle. You go back and make disciples. So I believe that's the final instructions that Jesus left for us. That's what he expects of us. And bottom line is we're all entitled to that free gift of forgiveness. And when all else fails... Just seek the truth in his word and follow Jesus. Thank you.